So I, I'm actually, well, you, you could sort of me, think of me as a stand-in for, for Ben de Klarlund. It's not entirely, but uh, still, uh, the, the topic that I am going to cover is going to be more or less uh, what she was going to say. Uh, what, what I'm trying to do, um, and I, I only have <laughs> 29 minutes left now to do that, uh, is to give a little bit of an overview, uh, an introduction to, to the field, and uh, definitely mention many of the things which I expect will be mentioned by many of the speakers uh, during the next couple of days. Uh, so basically, none of what I'm going to say here is my own research. It's all things that I've stolen from someone else. Uh, and those someone else are going to be here the next couple of days. Uh, so if, if I'm not correct, they will definitely make sure to, to correct me. Um, so basically, what we're interested in and, and what we're trying to do with this course is to put emphasis, as Kirsten was saying, on the combination of what we eat and what we do, the exercise that we do. I, I mean, coming from a semi-sports background as I do, uh, it's pretty obvious that when you do exercise, you also have to think about the nutrition. You have to think of what you eat. It's unthinkable to, to go through a Tour de France uh, and only concentrate on being very good at bicycling. You, you have to make sure that your muscles also get some nutrition in order to do that. Uh, so in, in some ways, I'm a little bit astonished when, when looking back. Uh, I, I mean, I've been involved in rehabilitation for now around 20 years. Uh, and, and it's only very recently that we seem to have started realizing that there is actually also some reason to start thinking about the nutrition part of it and try to see if there is uh, something to be gained by making sure that the patients that we try to train actually also get the right kind of food to eat. Uh, and so, so I see this as really a beginning of, of something which can grow to be huge in the future. Um, we, we're, we're not there yet. There, there are so many things we don't know, and I think this course will show all the things that we don't know. But we definitely have a little bit more than a beginning of uh, an understanding of what this might be all about. And, and at least the research which has been done so far very clearly uh, suggests that there are things to be gained here, that there are things that we can do in the future uh, and, and which we have ignored in the past. Um, so as, as a, an introduction to this field, I, 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 because this is what I like, this is my interest, this is the neuroplasticity, how the brain can change. Uh, and this is, many, many of you probably have seen this before if you have heard me giving talks because I, I usually always bring this up, that there has really been this huge change in the way that we think about how the brain works within relatively uh, recent years. Uh, I, I usually bring up Ramon I. Cahal, even though I, I, I think he's not really to be blamed so much, but he just happened to put in uh, those two sentences in a book that he wrote in 1909, uh, which sort of summarizes, I think, quite nicely the way that people were thinking about the brain uh, up through the, the 20th century. So what he says here is that once development is complete, the sources of growth and regeneration of axons and dendrites are irretrievably lost. And in the adult brain, the nerve paths are fixed and immutable, everything can die and nothing can be regenerated. So I mean, this is a really negative point of view uh, if, if you just take this for granted. Uh, I think what we really have to realize is that uh, what Ramon y Cahal did was to look at sections of the brain. It was uh, light microscopy, uh, so very low resolution, not the most efficient way of looking at the brain in many ways. Uh, basically, dead tissue that had been cut out from uh, dead brains. Um, what we can do today is something like this, which is using laser uh, confocal uh, microscopy to really look at the small details of the brain. And not only that, it's small details, yes, you can see the uh, scaling bar here, which is uh, one millionth of a meter, and you have a piece of a dendrite here, and, and just to give a, an idea of the scale, the cell soma would be some 10 meters out in the air somewhere there. So I mean, we're looking at a really, really, really small part of the, the dendrite here. And, and most importantly, this is 
in real life. This is living tissue. This is where things are actually happening now. We're looking into the brain while the brain is working. So what we have here is basically connections from other nerve cells. This is synapses, it's uh, spines, uh, where this nerve dendrite communicates with other nerve cells. And what we can do, and what has been done in, in this little video that I'm going to show, is to simply stimulate electrically some of the connections to this exact nerve fiber. And what I would like you to do is just to have a look at what happens in this area and try and see if you can also see how quickly this happens. Oops. Uh, come on, go back. Here we go. Here we go. Stimulation. And did you see it? It was too quick. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Stimulation. Swoops. Five minutes, it said. I'll do it again. Look for the red. Whoops. And just once more, and you can see. So what you see is that soon after the stimulation, there is a reaction in the tissue. It actually grows up, becomes much, much bigger. This is an activation of that synapse. So it has sort of been dormant. It hasn't been activated. As soon as you start stimulating, there is actually a structural change in that uh, exact synapse which has been activated. There is another example over here. So if you have a look again in this area, and that would be a stimulation at some point. And there, you could probably see it growing out. So that there now, if you go to YouTube, you can find lots of these small videos showing how the neural tissue reacts to whatever input. And this is the exact way that our brain is working. When, whenever there is activity, whenever a part of the brain is being activated, there is a reaction in the tissue. It changes, not really dramatically as such, but small changes. Uh, in the connectivity. This is the plasticity that we have. This is the basis for uh, our learning how the brain uh, changes. And this is, I think, the, the fascinating thing. We can measure these things now. We can manipulate with them. We can measure the effect in the brain, for instance, in relation to exercise or in relation to nutrition. This